I'm going to switch gears and talk about web testing itself. So a lot of people wonder um, about web testing. They've, we've had a long, long history with SCP and done amazing things testing SAP GUI, but now that Fiori is out, Fiori is a web application, and people need to realize you can test web applications with cert certified. So we do a really good job of this. Uh, we have what are called web optimizations, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover what are they, where do you find them in the customer portal, of course, um, and how do I load them into certify, how do I set and use them in capture, and then how do I reference them from the certified process. So I'm basically going to give you the end-to-end the -end life cycle of how to do that. So on my desktop, I'm in the customer portal, and if I go to the downloads link, I can do this as where I download the software, but you'll also see the web optimization or access definitions, right? And this gives us a list of all the different definitions out there, okay? Um, so obviously there's ones for S4HANA, 1809, and we saw that 50% of the people are planning on doing some type of deployment, about 20% were already in one, so I'm gonna click this. And what a, um, these definitions do is they basically our developers have gone through and figured out what are the different items. There's check boxes and combo boxes and drop down lists and lists and menus and all that. There's all these different things inside of uh, a pure UI. And what they do is they go through and figure out how to optimize identifying them and interacting with them. Okay? And so this is an XML file. We can see here, um, I'll open this up. Um, this folder has two files. There's a definition you can take. I'll just grab these. I'm going to copy them out and put them into um, a folder I've ready. So I unzipped them, and now I have my two files itself. So now what I want to do is I want to actually load these into Certify so I can use them in my tests and in Capture. So this is kind of the, um, I can show kind of the elegant part. So um, what you can do is you come over into your configuration and your web options. And I can see there's different configurations in the environment already. So I come to the global. Um, I'm going to actually go import a new one. So I'm going to say import. And I'm going to pull in my definition file. So if I come over to my downloads folder, I put here. There's my definition. And I'm going to give it an easy name so I can find it. You'll, you'll want to keep your version, your date, time, all those type things, right? But for the demo, I want to make it easy to find mine. So there's my definition. And then I'm going to grab my, um, import my configuration. And so they've now been loaded into the certified database. So everybody in their projects, when they come over, um, they can see, here's myself, and I can say, what's my default configuration? I'm going to call it Chris1809. What's my default definition? Um, I always want to use the cross-browser engine. Um, the cross-browser engine is the um, new way to go. It is um, highly performant, and it works across browsers. So it works with IE, works with um, Chrome, Firefox. We've got Edge and Beta. And so it's going to allow me to write a test for running across multiple browsers. Now, so that was pretty simple. So one person would go and pull these new definitions, okay? And then what I want to do is I actually want to go use those from Capture. So in the new Capture 2, if I come to my menus, I can see my options for HTML, and I can see there's a factory config, but I see these that have certify in front of them. The ones that start with the word certify means that these have been dynamically pulled from the certified database, okay? So um, if you've got multiple workstations with WorkSoft and, um, installed on them, it could be Capture, it could be um, from Analyze, it could be um, Certified Self, um, I don't have to go copy these files across all of them. All I have to do is reference them and they'll be made available. Okay. So, Everybody knows I can never tell my password right the first time. So what does this give you? So if I come over into, say, 
um, the sales order area. Um, when I look at the screen, what we'll see is there's a different thing. So I've got input fields, I've got menus, I've got buttons and such. So ideally, when I look at my capture over here, I'm saying I'm going to capture a web application. Okay? And then I have my live touch active for web applications. I've already set my definitions. So caption is how to interact with this web page. So when I start recording, what will happen is we connect over into the browser and we start working with it. So I can come over here. I can say I'm going to click the execute button. And then this will allow me to um, I'll record this and I'll keep walking along. So as I type the data, you'll notice I get very little screen lag. On the right, we're understanding what these input things are. I did a create sales order. I entered OR into the sales document. I input 1710 as the sales order, 10 into this field. When I click the button, it knows that I clicked a button, right? So um, what you get when you use these web optimizations is you get the combination of understanding how to find something on the page and how to interact with it. And so, you know, since we are scriptless, we um, don't usually um, like write code and those things. We just want the things to work, right? So let's see what it is. 01-30-2019, type that right today. Um, so the idea is the optimizations understand how to find these fields. It understands how to do um, interact with the um, elements on the page, how to um, navigate tables, all those type of things from a web page perspective, right? So what I get out of this is I get my capture file. And I'll stop recording. And I can see these are all the actions I did. Now, the reason this um, happened so quickly and I had no lag in, the, in my recording was because of two things. One, I'm using the new cross-browser engine, which is highly performant, um, and I've got my um, configuration and my definition files loaded. So we knew exactly how to interact with this software. So I'm going to save off this XML file, and then I'll come over to certify. So now, when I build my test case to go work with this page, what I'm going to do is figure out, um, does this actually work, right? So I'm going to say import the new process recapture. And I called that my downloads, documents, or soft captures. There's my Chris 1809. Okay, so I have, um, there's my sales order. Now, see it says Chris Web 1. There's my application version. So I'll, I'll say, go ahead and point to that, and I'll import my 13 steps. So now I have a nice, simple certified process that understands how to interact with all these things. So the fact that I had, um, my, def my web optimization, the combination of those knew how to, that I had input fields, I had named activities, I had send clicks, if I have input cells into a table, things like that. Um, I got very um, rich object identification and the object actions because my definitions, and I know how to find them on the page because of configuration. Okay? So now one thing people do is they would say, okay, I'm going to go run this right now. But there's one thing you have to do before that, okay? So what you need to do is you will need to reference this um, at runtime. So we put the, um, we downloaded the configuration and definition. We loaded them to certify so they're available to everyone. When I did my recording capture, I referenced them. Well, now when I run, I want to reference them again. So you'll see there's a step called load the application configuration. So system, browser, browser, load application. So inside of this, I need to reference that configuration file that I downloaded. Okay? So I'll save this process. Um, and what you'll see is I'm in Chrome, so I turn off the, uh, the busy check. I've got my timeout set. I've got um, scroll to view on bottom. So a couple of things that I always use with Chrome itself. So 
So, but the trick was to take this full life cycle at runtime, I'm going to go reference the files also. Okay. So, um, I'll just do my little parlor trick. I'm going to drag this onto the top here. So, the first step of the process is to execute this, um, to set the configuration, and then it'll run. So, I'll save this. Okay. So, I'm going to come back over here. And I need to come back. I'm going to reset my screen. Yep. So I'm back on my beginning screen here. I'll just close capture and move it out of my way. I'm going to run. So I'm going to go in and step through the first couple of these so you can see what's happened. So that first sub process I had, um, what we see is just going to say reference the um, web optimization files. It passed. Turn my busy check off, set my context kind of set myself up for success. And then obviously when I run, it's going to start going and clicking through the screen. So it's going to click the execute button and then enter all the data. 